Welcome inside Lita Lanes in Nash, New Hampshire, USA for the final regular season match of Candle Pins for Cancer. I'm Kyle Bruce, Jeremy C. Home alongside Rich Myrick is uh, loitering somewhere in the background with, with his expert analysis for Ladder 5 championship match between the Hall of Famer Craig Holbrook and number one qualifier Jonathan Boudreaux. Jeremy, that was a very difficult match. That was a, a, a grinding out for, uh, for Craig. That was... Just keep that in the cut. Um, that was tough. It was, and, and it's tough to watch, you know, two bowlers who are, are struggling, and, it, and sometimes if one is struggling, the other struggles along with them, you know, it's almost like y you can only do what your opponent is doing, and it, sometimes it takes that opponent to get those marks to get yourself going. It pushes you a little bit, and then once that happened, it, it looked like the marks started to come. Yeah, but the 135 third string for Craig Holbrook was the – deciding factor in his semifinal victory. Why don't we talk to both of our bowlers and get their input on this championship match. All right, sounds good. John, how are we doing? Doing well, doing well. So this is your first time on the old channel 50 lanes. I, I kind of consider you, I mean, you're young, what are you, about 27 years old? Yes, that's correct. So I kind of consider you like an, an old bowling purist. Like this is where you belong. Like, how does it feel to be bowling on these two lanes? Oh, that's nice. This is fun. Been looking forward to it for quite a while. I mean, you're bowling a Hall of Famer and Craig Holbrook. Uh, do you have any have any strategy to? No, not really. You, you're bowling against the pins. You don't bowl against the ball. You bowl against the pins, and I know Craig thinks the same way. So just uh, gotta do what needs to be done out there and see what happens. Hope it's enough. So obviously, as we'll, as Jeremy has said, and as we'll continue to say for the rest of this broadcast, you are in the Hall of Fame. I was at your ceremony. That was a, gr a great effort by Irby Kafalis to uh, put all that together for you. A tough match in that semifinal, as we've said, and as I butchered in our open here. How do you draw on your experience to keep pushing when the marks are not there? Well, the match was still close, and I was actually in the lead. So I was just trying to put something together you know, to widen it up a little bit, but it was a struggle. It, the pins were tough. You know, you couldn't be full, you couldn't be light, you had to hit them, you know, close to exact. But the last string turned out better, so I feel like I'm, I'm doing all right now. You've done pretty well uh, for yourself for your career, I would think, so you <laughs> you've got a lot of that that you can draw on. The winner of this championship match will walk out of here with $2,000. The runner-up will get 1000 Of course, again, the winner is our final entrant into the Tournament of Champions. Let's get to it. We'll see you right after this. The road to the championship concludes right now with Craig Holbrook on lane 33. Craig Holbrook of East Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Good start. Hey, it leaves the two and the four. Piece of wood out in front, a little bit to the right. Difficult to carry both pins here. Rich wasn't lying. Four remains. Craig really? threw a 345 and advancing past Wayne Springfield as he starts this match with a 10. Craig Holberg is averaging a solid 117 right now. High single 197, high triple 508, 55, 781. Back in the pocket, the 59. Piece of wood between the five. Obviously, want to stay away from that cap if he can. So much for that. <laughs> and he caps it, it goes. <laughs> you sure you guys want me in this call? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Kyle. <laughs> That's one out of two for Craig Holbrook. A timely spare gives him 20 and a ball. And that brings up Jonathan Boudreau. That's our first look at Jonathan Boudreau. The pride of East Boston. He starts off with a good head fit hit. Leaves a 7-10. Piece of wood on the left. Looks like it's against the lip of the plate. Ooh. Try to helicopter that, yeah, that, that piece of wood on the left there. And score that a nine. Just for the easy nine. 
He uh, is averaging 122 so far. High triple 491. That's a hell of a triple. High single of a 200. High five 746. That 200 thrown at Exeter Lanes. Light hit. And that's what he looks at. Five, seven, nine, and ten. Getting better now, Kyle. I, I think the red line on the left-hand side with the double wood now may be able to carry both corners. Too far left. A I'll difficult shot, nonetheless. Yeah, he'll be looking to pick up one of these for a nine blocks. Pair of nines to get his evening started. As Craig comes up to lane 33, working on a spare. Mind you, three marks in a row gets you $25 in bonus money. The winner of each string gets $25. Bonus. Not the Philly wanted, just four. And if anyone happens to throw a triple strike in the match, that's $500 in bonus money. Wow. And an autographed 8x10 of you, I think. If they want one. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Still three pins standing for Craig. Eight box. Ops for the head pin there. Very interesting. I know it's early in the match, but sometimes you take the two, depending on the situation. Doesn't that, uh, would that speak to Craig's confidence that he can I use the head pin to clear out the six and 10 for the extra pin and count? I think 100% it does. I think when you're as good as Craig Holbrook, you can do whatever you want. Uh, there you go. That's why he's in the Hall of Fame, and that's why we're sitting back here and why Craig looks at the big five on lane 34. Going to clean these up. I'm not sure he was all that happy with the placement. Wow, he almost made the 6, 7, 10 for a 10 box. Uh, Jonathan's coming up. 41 through four for Holbrook. He's 27 years old. He's a, uh, he's a teacher by trade. One, five, eight. Gonna look to clean up some of these pins, hope for at least an eight box. Yeah, that's what he gets. So open his first three, but he has had plenty of success in this building. An Easter Classic champion. I believe it was 2015. Yeah, no, even in his young age, no shortage of, uh, of accomplishments. And his six Pro Series titles at 26 years old, two-time Bowler of the Year, eight NBA State Open titles. And like you said, Easter Classic Championship, a New England Knockout Championship. He's won a world title with Lucky Strike. That was at Lakeside Lanes yeah. in Manchester, about 25 minutes up the street, back in 2016. And a 10 box. Early five pin lead for Craig. I'd like to offer a shout out to Lexi, Matt, and all the staff at Lita Lanes for having us today. Lita Lanes has 36 lanes of candle pin bowling, pool tables, arcade games, plus great food and drinks at the Kegler's Den. And right next door is Lita's Lighthouse with 12 more lanes of glow bowling and plenty of parking. Oh, Craig makes a great, sorry to cut you off, Rich. It's always during the ads, isn't it? What a beautiful shot from Craig Holbrook. The big five goes down on 33. His second mark, 51 plus this bonus ball. Look out. Right, right on the hip and he's got another shot at it. All right, let's try this again. And if he does it again, <laughs> uh, thanks to Lexi, Matt, and the staff at all at Lita Lanes, uh, we really appreciate it. 340 Amherst Street, Nashua, New Hampshire. LitaLanes.com. 
That's right, LidaLanes.com. You can find us here at Lita Lanes or Lita's Lighthouse with 12 more lanes atop of the 36 that they have here atop of their bar at Kegler's Den and their gracious hosts. We, we can't thank Lexi and Matt and the staff enough here. Seven for Craig Holbrook. I like the pause there where you hold your breath where you, you thought he might have hit that shot. You know, I thought he may have. Uh, Jeremy <laughs> may have to reread this ad again. I'll do it. And that'll bring up Boudreaux. There they go. The four pin, the last to go, and a bomb from Jonathan Boudreaux. So was that a J-bomb? Wow, that brings me back to the old... Um, the old forms. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it turned out to be very creepy <laughs> towards the end of its run. Uh, we are dating ourselves there. The first of two. Uh, Whoa. Be a beautiful ball. Nothing to show for it. Wow. Four, <laughs> that, that, five, that's... seven, eight, nine. What a mess. That looked as good as the first one. Just six in the strike. Looking to get a pair here. And a tough seven box. So after six, we're gonna go into our break. Craig Holbrook with an early four pin lead, 63 to Jonathan Boudreaux's 59. So we're gonna pause for some messages from our sponsors. We'll be back with the conclusion of string number one. Craig Holbrook leading by four, back up on 33. He's at 63 right now. Craig's qual qualifying score, 661. And that was good enough for him to... I believe he was a second seed. Be second with Boudreaux's 684, giving him number one. Makes it oh. oh, 10 pin stays. Pin snuck just behind it. And he'll pick the 10. Kyle Richie and I had brought up on the last episode that Craig has been on television in six different decades. You know, I'm glad that you brought that up as he drops oh, wow. nine and, and 10. ten. Right on cue. You sure you didn't work this out with him before he threw that ball? <laughs> you know, so I made a point earlier before this match started with someone in, in the back here in the gallery that when you take a look at his career, he has been near the top probably longer than anyone since Jutris in terms of, cons of consistent not taking right. any breaks. That's, I mean, that's a fair assessment. Not much you can do with the four, five, seven. You know, that's a that's a very different way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, without any any hiatuses, you know. When we take a look at, I mean, most people, I think, as Boudreaux has a ten. I think a lot of 69. people, a lot of people think. Sorry, Rich. A lot of people think that um, Tom Olsta is the goat, but. When you consider that Craig never stopped when five went off the air, Craig kept going and has enjoyed a lot of success yep. as that three pin is rocking. Wow, talk about moving one off its spot. Makes for a more interesting shot now. He's got the three and two. Let's see if he can throw it. Not enough to push it over to get the four seven. You were saying, Kyle. So I feel like that's a compelling argument as Boudreau has another 10 box. I mean, so many of the greats that we, we knew growing up, I mean, Al obviously being one of them. I mean, Al was enjoying his, the best year of his career. I mean, we remember the 466 against yeah. Paul Willits, only leaving three pins standing in that final season on five. Yep. And now Craig is back working on a strike on 33 for the difference still in a low scoring first string. Come on. Come on. 
gets the kick out on the six. He has the 2-4 for an opportunity to go spare on strike. Not this time, by the two. And Jeremy, if I can, uh, if I can plug the approach a little bit, uh, a podcast that, that you host, um, you've had Craig on, and uh, I wonder, did, did you ask, and maybe I'd be remiss if, because I did, I did listen to it, but I don't remember if you asked when you thought his prime was. Did you, did you ask him I, when you thought his prime may have been, considering six decades is absolutely ridiculous? I honestly, I didn't ask him that, because, I mean, as Kyle just re reiterated, I mean, if you ask him now, would you say he's in his prime? He would probably say no, but I still look at him as an elite bowler today. Sure. Just sneaks the one in front of the three. And actually, he was our very first guest. So a couple of makeable two pinners. Hopefully that won't. By the wayside, yeah. By the wayside, Kyle. I'm sorry. It's a, a one eleven there for Craig. I think you'd like to have both of those back. Boudreau only one mark to his credit. A strike six in the fifth. Pretty when it goes, isn't that the line? Yeah. Two four ten. Oh, he gives it a ride. It doesn't make it over to the ten pin. I'll pick the ten. Unsurprising fact about Mr. Boudreau is he manages a bowling part time. While teaching. While teaching. I can't think of anyone who is a bowling alley manager that does it part time. So I don't know how many hours that entails that he works. That's why he has no hair. <laughs> Benjamin Button of our game. <laughs> Still four pins standing here. Well, I was thinking maybe he managed a one alley house, you know, like the Fisher Price set, perhaps. <laughs> you know, I, I suppose I could put my LinkedIn that way as well. Yeah. Tough finish for, for Boudreaux. Six blocks for the 95. It's a tough one for 95, game. yeah. But, I mean, it's only a 16 pin lead. That's, that's n not much. Uh, so after the first string, it's 111, Craig Holbrook, Jonathan Boudreaux, 95. And uh, we'll be back with the second string. Welcome back to Lita Lanes in National New Hampshire, USA for our letter championship match between Craig Holbrook and Jonathan Boudreaux. Holbrook with a 16 pin lead. And we've been seeing a lot of that so far, gentlemen. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, you know, John's first ball has been overall pretty good. They've both been on the head pin. They've both been on their objects and a great bid. Six for, six for six on the head pin, one strike, six for seven on his objects. And a nine box. The story of this match might be who can carry the extra pin, who can take advantage of the breaks off the head pin. And it goes was left with the half Worcester. I, I feel like that was the story with the last match where it seemed like neither one could carry that extra pin until you know Craig started breaking up those two and ones and getting uh, tries to go outside and ends up going through the hole again. And as you rightly said Jeremy uh, during the post game interview Craig alluded to that he said that sometimes you just need a mark you know, it's really difficult when both bowlers are struggling just to find that one or two. You just, you want that one so you can have an easy one to get one. And then you have another one and then, you know, you put your opponents at that pressure. Very difficult when, when both bowlers are ice cold. Yeah. Boudreaux unhappy with the 17 start after two. We'll see how Craig starts off on lane 33. A golden opportunity here for Holbrook. He Worcester's right. 
Craig Ball's in a few leagues. Ball's in the Friday Pro Travel League, the Sunday Pro League up at Exeter, and the Tuesday Night Men's out of a Union Street in Holbrook. So Holbrook Ball's in Holbrook. He's so good they named the town after him. <laughs> One day we'll get there, guys. Not the start he wanted. But he well, can see for it by dropping them all on this one, too. And so. now I wonder if that bowling alley's been there for six decades. It's an honest question. Four horsemen right plus the seven and the nine. Uh, Craig is a fountain installed technician over at Coca-Cola. I feel like he's been there for a long time. Drew picks up three and count. So a 13 pin lead right now for Craig Holbrook. Just want to mention new this summer, the Amateur Candlepin Tour is a 90% handicap tournament series for bowlers of all skill levels. Doesn't matter your skill level from 80 to 180. You can hop in for each monthly tournament and each monthly tournament has a unique format. You can email amateurcandlepintour at gmail.com. That's amateurcandlepintour at gmail.com, or you can visit their page on Facebook for more details on the Amateur Candlepin Tour. Some new faces at some new places. We're looking forward to seeing you out there. The draw with the 10. Still looking for the first mark of the string. Not sure if the wood made that triangle trickier than it I, I, f I feel like it kind of did. It's, uh, off the hip and again, leaves the high-low jack. I don't think that wood's going to do much help. Oh, oh wow, just around it. the seven. Leaves the seven pin. Through the one right around the seven. Couldn't have placed a better bid. Waiting for that wood to settle down in the back. That'll be a nine bucks. 36 after four. Notice. Guys, uh, Holbrook kind of threw his towel a little bit in disgust when he saw that John didn't carry that shot as if to kind of pick himself up here like a let's go type of move. And he runs the middle. The bird of prey on lane 33. This is the kind of match where I feel like who can blink first and string together consecutive marks and get the fills because so far the fills haven't been good and the marks have been tough to come by. Now that shot was made in the last in the last match. I don't know if you saw it, but Wayne Springfield punched the spread eagle and left a pin on the deck, like in be in between. I don't know if it was the five. I, I, I don't know which which pin it was. Yeah, we'd have to go back and look at that one. But it turned into a three and three with a piece of wood that essentially was kind of wired up, if you will. And he gets the break. He's got the one and the eight piece of wood. Touches the touches the head pin. Which bowler is going to mark first, not blink first? I think. <laughs> Huge pins here. Carry oh. the ball takes it. Carries the eight. Christmas comes early in the Gate City. As I we think have the ball may have taken it at the end of the, the day. The, yeah. the ball hit, did. hit the pin on the plate and shot right into the eight pin. Our first mark of string number two. Bob Caleri pays a visit to lane 33. Still gonna pick this one up here for the 10 bucks. Oh, 
some of the some of the bowlers Boudreaux lists as his favorites would include Peter Flynn, Det Klein, who I know he's been a longtime partner of his, uh, Craig Holbrook, one of them, just to name a few. I'm sure, just like any of us, there's a laundry list of the of people we could say are our favorites. That was a good looking pocket hit, and he's got the triangle plus the 10. Five, eight, nine, and 10. How tough yeah. is it psychologically to bowl against one of your one of your idols? Um. Oh, and yes. he makes a fantastic shot. And sorry, I, pa I paused for a second just because I, I was intrigued to see how he was going to play that, that shot. That was a game-changing shot there, Jeremy. I, I kind of feel the same way. And, Kyle, you have a really great question that uh, I have to focus about <laughs> to get an answer to that one. No, I, I mean, I feel like the two of them know each other pretty well. And I, I feel like there's some comfort there. Whereas, say, if he was bowling an all-star, somebody that he doesn't know very well. Right. That makes sense. Craig trying to make a shot of his own. Now, see, I'll, I'll go with when, when you're young and it's the first time that you bowl against them, you're scared. But once you get them once, it's, it, it's a little bit different, um, even though it's still there. Do you know what I mean? It's... Uh, it's hard to put your finger on. There's always the respect, but I guess the, the jitters kind of go away a little bit. So as much as Boudreaux respects Craig, I, I don't think he's afraid of this, this match whatsoever. I don't think so either. And even at age 27, he's been pro for 10 years. So and he's, he has quite a bit in his resume so far. As and, and honestly, and I think with the mentality that, that John has, I think he would have done very well, you know, in, in Holbrook's heyday. No doubt. Ten box. And after six, we have Jonathan Madro at 66 with a fill. Craig Holbrook at 54. A 14 pin lead right now for the match. As uh, we'll pause for s some messages from our sponsors, and we'll be back with the conclusion of string number two. Welcome back. Boudreau working on a spare. It's a big fill here. Down 14 pins. He's on the head pin. Leaves another beauty. What a mess. Two, four, seven, eight, nine. Well, I don't know if he is a little full. He might be able to get that piece of wood to catch it. Ah. Caught the cap. And the nine box. At 70 through seven boxes so far. And Boudreaux has a house record at Riverwalk Lanes, throwing 13.99 for 10 strings. Yeah, he did that when he was 18, I think. I mean, at Riverwalk of, of places, which is you know, not, it is a pretty tough house. It's a very makes you work for every pin that you get. And a great shot. His second mark of string two. A timely mark. A lot of ways to get back into it. It's going to bring up Craig Holbrook, and we'd like to mention that Candlepin Bowling, this episode of Candlepin Bowling, is proudly presented by Candlepins for Cancer. This charity supports bowlers and their family members who are fighting cancer with money to help pay for treatment and bills. And since our inception... And there's a strike for Craig. It's always during the promos, guys. I'm going to have to start from scratch. We get ex inspired. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It's a thing. great cause. Now, the charity does support bowlers and their family members who are fighting cancer with money to help pay for treatments and bills. And since our inception, the charity has given away over $12,000 to those in need. And that's 12,000 and counting, thanks to you. And we appreciate you all tuning in. And electronic donations can also be made via candlepinsforcancer.com. That's candlepins for cancer, the number four, candlepinsforcancer.com. Oh, 
cannot catch the six pin. Or you can go old school and send a check to 467 High Street, number eight, Hampton, New Hampshire, 03842. That's 467 High Street, number eight, Hampton, New Hampshire, 03842. Courtesy of Al Johnson and Candle Pins for Cancer. Thank you so much. Craig, that time making that mark count. Strike nine with the fill and the 10. Boudreaux's bonus, and he runs the middle. It's been that kind of match so far. That takes care of the left side. All right, we'll just be looking to take care of the right side and move on to lane 34. And he gets the 10. Big pins. He's left five standing. So far in this string, we're going to end it on a good note, and it won't be easy. Three, seven, ten. Well, let's see which end of the wood he elects to use. I think he may have to hang it on the gutter, guys. I'm not sure. I think you're right, because otherwise he'll leave the seven. Red line. Okay, right, we'll be looking to pick one of these up. You know, I always go back to how do you carry both corners on a shot like that? And Boy, I guess you're just happy with nine, really. And he'll settle for eight. And that leaves the door open for Holbrook here. 102 second string for Boudreau. Well below his 122 average. You know, we talked about some of uh, Jonathan's accomplishments. I mean, look at the laundry list that, that, that Craig has. We have three Easter titles, four world teams titles, four singles titles, six time bowler of the year between the WCBC and the Pro Series. I mean, oh, what a shot for Craig. 3-7, beautiful shot. 27 consecutive years finished in the top 10 in the final rankings on the Pro Tours. That speaks to our point about the six decades. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That, that level of excellence being maintained for all that time. And he estimated about 111 television appearances. How about his appearance in the True Value Championship show against Al in 1993? Yeah. A heartbreaker. Which I believe he, he told us on our on our interview on the approach. He said he threw a warm-up string where he, he threw a 186. He did. And then lost by a pin. He needed six to tie or seven to win. And left the bucket plus the ten. Ten box. Drinks. I don't drink Coke anymore, so you know. So we have Craig Holbrook with a 110, Jonathan Madro 102. After two strings, 221 to 197, a 24 pin lead for Craig. As we will pause for sponsorship, and we will be back with the uninterrupted third string in this championship match. Welcome back to our ladder championship match. The final string of the regular season, Craig Holbrook has a 24 pin lead and he's on lane 33 right now. Just off the head pin a little bit. Gets a four with his first ball. Not the start he wanted. Not an easy cleanup. Eight box to start. Twenty-four pin match coming into this championship match. The winner of this will go to our tournament of champions. And, and he touches them all.
So we have a technical difficulty here on, uh, on 33 here. I have a stat here from our director slash statistician. And both bowlers have left 18 pins standing through the first two. I, c I can guarantee you that that's not a number that either one of them are happy about. Or accustomed to. Or Exactly. Seeing what the Jonathan can come up with. And it comes back with a strike of his own. Put a little more loft into that one. He didn't lob, but he put a little put a little more air into it. And he was able to get the kick out on that left side. And he got the kick and the four pin poked both the two and the or the three and the six, I think. Interesting strike. Looking for the double. Trips the ten pin. Chance here for to for Jonathan to gain some momentum. Yeah, he's got to be salivating at the idea of a, a nice neutral spare leave here. And he misses right. And his reaction suggests that it's just been this kind of match for both of our bowlers. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, the thing through. is, there's still a lot of room to go. There, uh, we're just getting started here. Just threw two here in the third. Through completed boxes, I've got it at 16 less the fill, or plus the fill, I should say. Both bowlers to this point have struggled filling their marks. 4.5 for Boudreau, 5.25, and a two pinner for Craig. See what the wood decides to do, and what will Craig decide to do here, guys? It's kind of hard to tell from the angle that we're at. If I mean, I, I, it looks like he can skate by it, but he's going to go oh. for the wood. The ball comes off the sidewall, takes out the five pin. I thought he would have to go far left. That's and that's what I thought he was going to do if he could get by that piece of wood and hit it on the outside. Ocean ball this time. Got the fill he wanted though. Seven's not bad. Well, that piece of wood behind the behind the head pin may be of some help. Yeah, and a second piece of wood behind there too, Jeremy. I think the head pin's okay here. Anywhere full on the head pin should be able to carry both back ones. Oh, yeah. oh. oh. almost got it on the way back. Nearly tripped it. A little on the lean side, but still got to be very happy with the fill and even happier with the 10 box out of that. That's a good trip for Holbrook. Already at 55 through four. A much better start this time around compared to the last trip. Another great, another great first ball for John. Nothing really to show for it, although Got the two and the 10. Oh, he tried, what an effort. Two right over the top of the 10. But he's opposite a spare seven. And then he gets the 10 box. As he moves over to lane 34. Big spot for a markup on the board for him if he can. Opposite the 10 from Holbrook. Uh, Pedro has some some television experience. Uh, he was on the Comcast Kids show. A lot of appearances on Steve Reno's Candle Pins for Kids. So I mean, he's no stranger to the to the lights by any means. The and three pinner goes. It. Big mark. He needed that one, guys. Yep. On the outside. Nice ball. One, two, four. And against Craig's open. He needs that big fill. Interesting leave. Wow, very strange one off the three pin there. You got the one, two, eight, and ten. 
Don't see this that often. No, it's oh, gonna go. I mean, why not? Nice recovery after being off the head pin sure to clean is. up. Already his third mark. Putting the pressure on our number one qualifier. Tough fill. He's definitely not happy. And a nice 10 bucks. Watch Seven, pins. 78 through six. Goudreau working on his fill, I mean, and he needs a good fill here and another opportunity. Oh, this is the ball of the match, gentlemen. If he's gonna make a close, he could use eight, nine, or 20 here. And he finds the head pin, another two and one split. Let's see if the wood stays and falls. He wanted it to snap up a little bit. Could have touched the six pin. It's seven on the fill. And a good count and a good 10. All right, it's a nine. So it does help a little bit, but he really needs another mark here. Hit and a strike. And that's opposite another open from Holbrook. Running out of time though, four boxes left. Two, four, and ten. He got it. Big mark. Bonus. On the head pin, goes the through middle. the middle. box for Craig. Down to our last four boxes. First bonus ball. He's looking for the double. He does get the four pin to trip though. So at least he's not looking at that. Needs this one. He's on. And he it. gets it. He is on it. A clutch mark from Jonathan Boudreau. I'd, I'd be lying if I told you that I was nervous he was going to catch that pin in the gutter. And a half Worcester. That hurts. Hoping to get a nine box out of this. Craig coming up, looking to fill his spare in the eighth. And he'll get the nine. And that nine puts Boudreaux at 103.
one 18 pin lead plus this fill make that 25. not going to get it. And a nine box for Craig. Puts Craig at 110 right now. Just off the head pin. He oh. almost makes it, leaves, leaves the 10 pin. The 10 box puts him at 120 for a 341. And we just want to thank Alley Chat for bringing you this third string without commercial interruption. And please subscribe to Alley Chat, the channel on YouTube. Besides these great episodes of Candlepin Bowling presented by Candlepins for Cancer, you can also watch vintage matches all the way back from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Subscribe to our Facebook page, Alley Chat, for live Friday night Pro League matches and much more. A great first ball and oh. a strike. How unusual was that pocket hit? That, that was a strange pocket hit. That was slow motion. Almost I thought he was going to the back row went last. Yeah, it was like six, seven, eight, nine, and then they tumbled at the same time. So a Pressure strike from Boudreaux in the ninth. Tell you what, he throws another one here, and this is going to be an interesting finish. He already is. <laughs> Just missed that head pin. Well, he definitely has to have this one. It's going to be open in the 10th. A nine box. It's going to be a 130 for Boudreaux. And that's going to do it. For a, for a 327. So a low scoring ladder championship final as Craig Holbrook is the fifth entrant into the Candle Pins for Cancer Tournament of Champions with his. Victory over Jonathan Boudreau, 341 to 327. Correct. We'll talk to our bowlers right after this. Time out. Welcome back inside Lita Lanes in National New Hampshire, USA. Craig Holbrook is our new ladder champion after defeating Jonathan Boudreau, 341 to 327. Jeremy C. Holmes alongside, and uh, that was a repeat of the semifinal, so it seemed. Yeah, and like, both bowlers were struggling to find, to, to get that extra pin to fall. Both of them on their object pins, on their head pins. I mean, you mentioned a stat where where they, was it, uh, I think both bowlers left 18 pins. After the first two, that's correct. And yeah, I mean, like something that they're not accustomed to and definitely not happy about, but they turned it on a little bit in the third string, and, um, and we got a pretty good finish. Let's talk to both of our bowlers and give them some money. How about that? Come on in, guys. John. Well, I mean, you, you had a little bit of tough luck. I mean, your first ball, you, you, you had a great first ball. I mean, you, neither one of you could really break up that extra pin, so you're looking at a lot of wonky leaves. But, I mean, in the, in the end, you got $1,000 for, for second place, $25 in bonus money for winning the, the third string, and... Uh, I mean, what a, I don't know, what were your thoughts? Uh, I mean, just to try to stay on the head pin, it's frustrating getting that many splits. But then I had a chance, though. I had that strike and spare, and I, I, it wasn't the head pin's fault there. I, I threw a bad ball and threw a half whistle. That was, that was the one chance I had. That was the hanging in there and staying on the head pin, and then I blew it there. So, Craig, and, and can't do that. Can't do that against this guy. And, and, and Craig made a couple really nice shots, you know, to, to put the pressure on you. Yeah, I mean, neither one of us, I think, probably the average uh, pinfall on the head pin was like six, and the average off the head pin was like three. So, you know, you're not going to get much for a score when you do that. Well, congratulations. I know you're going to be back next season. Yeah. Will do. I'll be back. And once again, the man that gets the big check, two wow. 
thousand dollars make that drive back to east bridgewater uh <laughs> even with the gas prices being what that is maybe you can afford a full tank of gas at this point uh, yes i can inside i'm jumping up and down this is really exciting i didn't think things like this could happen to me anymore but hey what the heck i had a lot of fun conditions maybe they could have been they could have been tough for both sides but it's a battle and and i did okay you did better than okay you did 2,000 reasons why you were uh, well, you'll be going on to into the Tournament of Champions. Uh, we were talking before the break about how when you, it's a little more challenging to make those adjustments as you get older and to find your way through a match in which you got more breaks than Jonathan, but your experience allowed you to take advantage of some of those breaks, and here you are with the championship. Yeah, I did have a lot more breaks than he did. I mean... Not that my first ball was better than his. It's just maybe I hit it in a particular place where he didn't hit. But yeah, what the heck? I mean, I did the best I could, and it was great. Well, the best you could is uh, certainly good enough as our fifth entrant into the Tournament of Champions is Craig Holbrook over Jonathan Boudreau. For our entire crew and Frank DeLuca, Al Johnson, Jeremy C. Holman, Rich Myrick again, loitering in the back. My name is Kyle Bruce. We'll see you next time on Candle Pins for Cancer, presented by Allie Chat and Al Johnson.